We're going to put together a proactive watering schedule that we're about to go through so that it's taken care of all summer long. Talk to me, grass. Talk to me. All right, everybody. It is early March here in southeast Texas, and it is already in the 80-degree range. So we've got some grass starting to grow. We've got the Bermuda coming up. We've got to get our sprinklers running. We've got to get our watering times down for this time of year. And on today's video, we're going to dive into how much how often and how long you should water your Bermuda grass. Let's get started. One of the biggest mistakes you can make when taking care of your Bermuda grass is overwatering. This can lead to issues, mud spots, also increase the amount of fungus that your lawn has in it, which can lead to major problems down the road. So let's dig into a few of the things that you can do to make sure that you water your Bermuda grass for the right amount of time in the right areas and that we do it the right times. First, let's dig into how much you should water. Bermuda grass is recommended to receive an inch to an inch and a half of water per 7 to 10 days. We're going to break that down and just say that it needs around 5 inches of rain per month spread out evenly over the weeks. Now when you set up your sprinkler system, you want to make sure that you do it so that you're spread out evenly over the course of the month, watering every 5 to 7 days. You do want to take into account that if you are getting rain on a regular basis, you need to adjust your sprinkler system or even shut it off during the times when it rains and start it back up once you stop receiving regular rainfall. Texas A&M University did publish a guide to Bermuda grass where they state that you should water your soil in the areas where Bermuda grass is planted down to six inches of depth and that you should do that every seven to ten days. One of the most important things about their guide though is it says you should not water your lawn again after a six inch depth watering until the lawn starts to show signs of weakness. Now, we're not going to let our lawn start to show signs of weakness. We're going to put together a proactive watering schedule that we're about to go through so that it's taken care of all summer long. So let's take a look at how we're going to put together our watering schedule, including all of the different times for the different areas around the house. For our flower beds around the front of the house, we're actually going to water those two minutes every other day at six in the morning. Those are gonna have pop-up sprayers so that we get an even amount of water on the beds regularly. Now, if we start noticing that flowers are dying or we're getting fungus in the beds, we're gonna revise that and either raise or lower our times, but keep our frequency the same. We wanna make sure our plants live and look great throughout the summer. So I've actually got 28 different watering zones in this one acre yard. The front yard has 12, the side yard has the next four, and then the backyard is gonna have the remainder of the zones. One of the challenges that we're faced with when it comes to getting even water distribution on everything is there's different kinds of sprinkler heads in each area. We've got pop-up sprayers in certain areas and rotary sprayers in other. So what does that mean when it comes to making sure you get even water distribution throughout your yard? Let's dig into that. We currently have our pop-up sprayers set to five minutes per zone because those are gonna put out a little more water over a shorter period of time. Now with our rotary sprayers, those are gonna take a lot more time to get the same amount of water down into the soil. So we're gonna set those at 12 and we'll see how our grass does and adjust accordingly. I'm gonna go ahead and pop my watering schedule up in the Rainbird app right here so that you can take a look and see exactly how I've set it up inside of the app and how you can do the different adjustments as necessary. Now, if you don't have an irrigation system, you'll wanna put out some cans such as tuna cans or uh, just empty tin cans, put your sprinkler out and see how much water is produced into that in a half hour watering period. This will let you know how much water you're actually putting down on your yard. Another important factor in watering is the trees. I've currently got drip lines on all three of my trees and those are set on their own zone so that I can control how much or how little water I'm putting down on them at a given time of year. These are new trees so we really want to make sure when we do water them we wet the soil significantly, which will keep the root beds growing down versus out because we don't want to wreck our concrete with trees that are trying to creep out and find moisture at the surface. While I am currently watering every seven to 10 days with larger amounts of water, in the summer when it really heats up and I've got a good moisture bed in the soil, I am going to switch to watering every four days with a little bit reduced amounts of water just to make sure my soil keeps getting a dose of water on it as often as possible without harming the grass. Next, let's recap how long. Obviously, if you're watering every seven to 10 days, you're gonna water a little bit longer. For my rotors, that would probably be at 15 to 19 minutes, 
And for my pop-up sprayers, that's going to be around eight minutes. Now, if I'm watering every four days, I'm going to reduce those times to where my pop-ups are running for four minutes and my rotary sprayers are running for around 12 to 13 minutes. Now, obviously, I will adjust this per zone based on what I see happening in the grass. You've got to let your grass speak to you. Talk to me, grass. Talk to me. So now that we've covered watering schedules, go ahead and get ready, get set, and get your sprinkler system set up for the growing season. Get your sprinklers out of the garage. Get your hoses out. Let's get ready to grow. Appreciate you watching. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below if there's a video you'd like to see me do in the future. It can be anything to do with the yard, the home, and I'll see you in the next one.